So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to make not a piano patch, but something that'll sound enough like a piano in a mix that you can sort of get away with it. Um, it's a pretty simple patch, uh, and I use some version of this a lot in my generative patches, which is, you know, sort of the inspiration here. Um, so what it is, is a sine wave oscillator. Uh, I'm just using a keyboard module right now to control this, to keep everything simple. That has the FM option turned on. And then that's fed back into it. Um, and what that does is add some harmonic content to the sine wave. And, and what I like about this oscillator is that uh, along with that har upper harmonic content that's added, there's still sort of a rounded lower uh, register. So you get, you know, the sort of warmness of a piano with some of the higher harmonics that, you know, characterize a mallet hitting a, a piano string. Um, sort of. You know, again, all of this is with an esque around it. Uh, but you feed the, the oscillator's output back into its input to generate those harmonics, and you can play around with different settings. I usually do something between uh, a unity gain uh, feedback or uh, two decibels. If you go higher than that, you start getting some more um, uh, synthy tones, I would say. And if you, you know, don't use any FM at all, you just get a sine wave, which is nice, but not what we're after here. So I had this at about two decibels, and I think that works pretty well. That goes into a VCA, um, and then the envelope is quite important. So what I have here is an ADSR with just the attack and decay stage set. If we go into uh, the settings, what I've done is turned off sustain and release, turned off immediate release to get that settings. And with immediate release off, this will act as a triggered envelope rather than a gated envelope. Um, and then what I've set it to is just a little bit of attack. I find if you set the attack all the way to zero, you still get the same sort of percussive sound, but it can be a little bit uh, sharp. So if you add just a touch of attack, not a lot, eight milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, it sort of smooths off that, that transient just a little bit um, and then the decay I usually use something between 600 milliseconds for a sort of sharper plinkier piano sound and I, I'll go above a second on occasion but I generally like something in the 800 millisecond range Uh, you know, the, this doesn't have the the uh, sustain of a grand piano, uh, but I think that would be sort of a mistake because the longer the the sound exists, the more again synthy it sounds. And then this is really important. I have a multiplier with three inputs, and I have sent the uh, envelope into that three times. Uh, to shape it, to give it an exponential curve so that we get a more percussive sound that has that, uh, you know, exponential decay of something like a piano's envelope. Um, if I just connect the uh, envelope directly to the BCA, let me, we get a very different sound. doesn't quite have that same sort of 
you know, decay that you expect out of something piano-esque. Uh, so that envelope, <laughs> that envelope shaping is uh, pretty important. And then finally, uh, down here I have a mul two multi-filters in series. The VCA goes out of one into, or it goes out of the, the sound goes out of the VCA into one of the multi-filters. And then the output of that multi-filter goes into another multi-filter. This one is set to low pass and this one's set to high pass. And what I'm doing is creating a variable band pass uh, filter um, I have more control over it than, than just a simple bandpass filter, which is why I use two of these in series. And what I find is that a filter, a low pass filter around, I'll usually cut the Q a little bit from its default of 0.7 and a filter anywhere between uh, 1100 and 1400 hertz sort of cuts off some of the, well, if I, I, open it up more it lets through some of more the more um, again synthy harmonics of that uh, FM oscillator and then the low or the high pass filter cuts off some of the, the low end um, because the FM sine wave can have a lot of like low end energy. Um, so if I turn this down and it can overwhelm the upper harmonics. So a little bit of high pass filtering can go a long way uh, toward making the sound a little tighter. And I know, you know, this isn't a piano sound but if you're working in sort of like a generative context and you add as i'm about to a little bit of plate reverb let's say you can get away with it now one thing i'll note is that there's sort of a limited range where this sounds right um, if i turn the pitch of this note up pretty high you know it definitely sounds more synthetic in that range um, and if I turn it down pretty low it, it also takes on uh, you know like a, a nice bass sound but not a piano bass sound so there is, you know, it's sort of a, a, a couple of octaves where it works really well. Um, and outside of that, not quite as well. Um, but that's how I create sort of piano-esque sounds in some of my generative patches. I think it's a pretty, like... Um, you know, simple way to do that. If I cut out this uh, plate reverb for a minute, you'll see that it's it's pretty cheap. Uh, the CPU is right around 8.5% there. So, you know, uh, particularly in generative patching, you're always sort of weighing the cost of voices versus their complexity. And, you know, you could dive into a more complex FM piano sound with multiple operators but this gets the job done in a mix. Um, you know, it's not the, it's not gonna fool anyone, um, but it'll sound good, hopefully. I, I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, and so, yeah, that's how to create a piano-esque uh, sound. I hope you like this. Take care.